Hello and welcome to the episode 231 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Among other things, today we'll have some peculiar fan interaction for the Beatles. Booing in 1962, jelly bean throwing in 1964, and the threat to shoot the band in 1966. Let's see. On the 19th of August 1960, the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, performed their third night at the Indra Club in Hamburg, West Germany. One year later, in 1961, the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums and Paul McCartney now on bass, performed at the Aintree Institute in Liverpool for another BK Promotions night. In 1962, the Beatles, with Ringo Starr on drums, performed at a Cavern Club for an evening dance event. It was the first time Ringo played at a venue with the lads as a proper member. It was also a tense occasion, and not for musical reasons. There were girls crying in the street, vowing never to put a foot in the Cavern ever again. People shouting, Ringo out, Pete in! during the performance and making loud noises that disrupted the show. In 1963, the Beatles started another six-night residency in a seaside town. This time, the engagements were at the Gaumont Cinema in Barmouth. The Beatles were supported by Tommy Quickly and Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas for the duration of the residency. After the first show of the evening, there was a party backstage for Kramer's 20th birthday. On the 19th of August 1964, the Beatles kick-started their first proper North American tour, playing the Cow Palace in San Francisco, California. It was a full house, with 17,130 seats filled, for a total gross of $91,670 about $766,000 in 2020 money, 52% of which went to the Beatles, about $398,000 in 2020 money. The 29-minute performance had to be interrupted twice because the fans were throwing too many jelly beans on the stage. During the concert, Beatles manager Brian Epstein was approached by millionaire Charles O. Finlay, Finlay was disappointed that the Beatles wouldn't play in his hometown, Kansas City, Missouri, and wanted to talk Epstein into adding an extra date in the tour. The only possible date was the 17th of September, a designated resting date to allow the lads to reach New Orleans, Louisiana, without too much stress. Epstein felt obliged to refuse the initial offer of $50,000, about $418,000 in 2020 money, to add the date in Kansas City, and to refuse again when the offer was raised to $100,000, about $836,000. Another North American tour in 1965. On this date, the Beatles played the Sam Houston Coliseum in Houston, Texas. Two shows, 24,000 people in total, $85,000 net fee for the band, about $701,000 in 2020 money. The date was also noteworthy for the level of enthusiasm the band found when they arrived in town at 2 a.m. According to Beatles historian Mark Lewison, it was, and I quote, Beatlemania at possibly its most acute level yet witnessed. Teenagers surrounding the band's plane when it landed, teenagers jumping on the wings on the plane and knocking on its windows, teenagers in maids' uniforms trying to sneak in the Sheraton Lincoln Hotel, trying to get into the band's rooms, and an armored vehicle to move the fabs from the hotel to the Colosseum. The first show was interrupted for a bit when people in the first two rows started to get hurt from other people pushing from behind. Third North American tour on the 19th of August 1966. On this date, in the morning, the Beatles arrived in Memphis, Tennessee. 
once they settled in the Mid-South Coliseum, where they were going to play at 4 and 8.30 pm, the Fabs received an anonymous phone warning saying that at least one of them would be assassinated during one of the two shows. The first performance in front of 10,000 people went on smoothly, but then, during the second one, someone threw an exploding firecracker on the stage. The Beatles stopped playing and looked at each other, checking if they had been shot. Not a nice moment. After the end of the show, the band reached the Metropolitan Airport by a Greyhound bus, while their limousine was sent out of the Coliseum as a decoy. They caught a plane to Cincinnati, Ohio, landing there at 1.35 am. 1969, between 2 pm and 4 am, work on Here Comes the Sun, Something and the End was advanced with a stereo mix down. Here Comes the Sun had also received a synth overdub at the beginning of the session, whereas something lacked the instrumental jam that concluded the song in the mix realized on the 11th of July. The conclusion of this episode leads me to thank you for your help and dedication. It's thanks to you that I will be able to complete further music-related content, this time with a proper video. If you're new to the community and don't know what to do, please visit www.simonmas.com support and do what you can to make the difference. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.